Hi, and welcome everyone once again to another Atos Smart Manufacturing Fireside Chat. Today it's something very special, and I will tell you more about that in a couple of seconds. Maybe you have seen one or the other fireside chat already over the past weeks we have done. And yes, that was also a result of that there was a lot of change needed over the last couple of weeks, how to deliver content, how to stay in contact. So it's about changing, adaption, and also reinvention. We were talking about marketing, global marketing, what the pandemic has brought in the matter of changing global marketing to reach audiences all over the world. We were also talking about smart manufacturing studio sessions and about the innovations you can see there, tailor-made workshops, where we're discussing in depth what you might expect, what we want to achieve, and how we want to work together. But today, it's a really special session. It's the beginning of the Atos Manufacturing Humanity series. We'll be talking about and recognizing resiliency and achievement. So really, today is a day where we step back get in a more little settled position. Yeah, thinking about like what was done in the past, how we adapted. And I'm so pleased that I now may welcome Robert Kramer, Global Manufacturing Marketing Head. It's so great to have you here because we started all that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and it changed yeah. so much. And now we are here. So Robert, so great to have you here again. Oh, I'm thrilled to be back in the studio. It's such a great platform to to showcase and talk to great people about innovation and today the humanity series begins. Well, that's really so, so perfect. And I think it's important not always to just focus on the real business side about the offerings, but about the people, how people adapt, the challenges people might face in these times over the last weeks, but not even, it doesn't have to be a pandemic like COVID. Sometimes there are times where you struggle, where you have to motivate yourself, where you mm -hmm. have to get back up on stairs and just like keep it going, right? And I, I think we could tell stories for hours right now. Um, maybe just before we go ahead, for all the participants on LinkedIn Live or on YouTube, if you have a question, feel free to comment under the video and we will see that we can cover the one or the other question during our live right now. So Robert, tell me more about it. It's like, how did we ramp that up all together? Why are we here today? Tell us a bit more also about your thought on that and why it is so important for you. You know, I think it's important to recognize that we all face challenges and we all have different ways that we want to deal with it. And when we are faced with these challenges and they're upon us and we're not prepared, what do we do? And what people have faced these challenges of resiliency, what did they do? So we have a special guest today that we're going to introduce in just a minute, but he went through some adversity and, and what did he do and what does his advice on what he recommends the get? The, the viewers, excuse me, to do as well. It's important to also recognize the humanity series that it does with people and what they're doing in today's world and to reflect on them and their well-being. It's super important. Yeah, well, that's you, absolutely well, great. Well, yeah, 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 really, I think about that. It's like how we can all work together, collaboration in another way, helping each other out, sharing best practice, helping someone up who is down at the moment, either being like because of something, well but said. on the achievements, like reinventing yourself, like this is why that studio exists. This is why that format exists. Um, that was not there two years ago. And you already mentioned it. Today, we have a very, very special guest. And uh, uh, you know you know him quite long. Do you want to introduce him or should I introduce him? Go well, for it. You're already, you're already speaking and I think you can do a great <laughs> job. Thank you. Well, then, then absolutely fine. Then, so I, I welcome uh, Ricky Kalman, mindset expert, motivational speaker, author, podcast host, and also a TV personality. And we're both TV personalities today, now on LinkedIn Live. Great to have you here, Ricky. Thank you, Frizu. Thank you, Robert. Great to see you both. And it's great to be on this platform to talk to everybody live. It's great. So great to have you here. And now we are, that's also my premiere for where I have two speakers in one of my fireside chats. So it's it's great conversation. I had already enjoying it. So we were talking about reinvention, about challenges, about resilience, about times where you just like don't feel like to go for it, but still then you're bringing it to a goal because you have the idea, you get back the spirit and all that. And I think you could tell stories 
for days on that, Ricky, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, mindset matters in everything you do. You've heard me say that over and over again. Your team has heard me say that, but it really does make a difference in, in literally our decisions, in our failures, and even in our success. Uh, what goes on between the years is extremely important. And, and by the way, we're all human. And I'll point to myself. We're, we're not immune to all the things that are going on around us, but it's it's how we adapt how we perceive and how we react to the things that we are faced with that really matters. And, and Ricky, you know, if we, before we go to all those great places that you just talked about, you know, when you, can, can you give us a little bit of a background? Cause the audience doesn't really know who you are necessarily. Some may, some may not, but what? Take us through. <laughs> <laughs> we mean, you know, each other, but let's talk a little bit about, <laughs> let's talk about like, we know that you're a mindset expert. We know that you have a book. We know that you have an app, but let's, let's rewind a little bit. Let's talk a little bit sure. as a young man. You know, you started working, you, you started the resiliency, you know, parade at that point. So talk about how you started working. Talk about how you got to where you're at and why mindset? Like, why did you decide to turn that rock over? Sure. So, I mean, 30 plus years in this business, I'm an entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur. And I, and I think when I think of entrepreneur, I think of somebody that holds themselves accountable for everything they do and mm -hmm. take a risk at things because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for that risk and I'm a, responsible for the failures and all the success. Um, what was a business for 30 plus years was 150 dates at live events, training programs, conferences, meetings around the world. And it was the normal. The normal was get on a plane, show up somewhere around the world, speak, train, coach, and build relationships with clients and offer more content and more technique on an ongoing basis. When it comes to mindset and sales and growth mindset, that was the norm. And that's what I've been doing ever since. But when I say it, it wasn't a perfect shell because we constantly expanded on it. Over the years, I created new content. As you mentioned, I, I wrote a book that released last year. We created a mobile app on mindfulness and meditation and sales mm -hmm. growth. But w even I was challenged in this last year and, and well, humanistic as it was, right. everything stopped. But how, before you go there, let's get there in just a second. When, why did you decide to do mindset? I mean, did, were you feeling like there's a great satisfaction in helping people all those days on the road that you just mentioned? I mean, when you finished the show, what gratification did you see and feel that kept you going to keep on going? Because I'm leading up to something because when we got to where we're at today, something had to get you through that. So let's talk, let's go, let's still go back to what the, the satisfaction was. Well, you, you, you made a really good point. Listen, whether we're on a, a video call, on camera, on a TV show, or even a live event, as a speaker, as an entertainer, as somebody that's in front of an audience, the audience is your fuel. I mean, success is your fuel. Having somebody react to what you do and have a positive impact is fuel. And it does yeah. keep the machine going and it, it does spark a fire to, to put mo more fuel on the fire. That, that is to me extremely rewarding. And mindset itself has always been fascinating to me. And as you know, Robert, and some of the audience knows, my background was hypnosis. And I really took an old concept of hypnosis, that stereotype of the swinging watch, and everything that most people thought about. And I really dispelled and educated people uh -huh. that it's nothing more than an individual thinking differently. It's not about me controlling them. It's me teaching them to control themselves. So fuel for me is education. Fuel for me is showing an, an, a leader how to be a better leader, uh, a sales individual, individual how to be a better solution provider. Mm -hmm. And that was always the fuel for me over these years. Yeah, I've watched a lot of your programs. They're fantastic. And so you went through this amazing success. And all of a sudden, January 2020, you know, you, you look at this rock to, to turn over, this mountain to climb, these hurdles to go over. You know, many people out there listening, you know, they potentially are feel, were feeling the same thing. You know, you had to change your world. But and one more thing, you, you personally are responsible for a lot of people in your family. And when you look at all those things, and you just mentioned earlier that you're an entrepreneur, what what did you think, first of all, forget about giving any advice or any mindset, just personally, Ricky, 
What, what were you thinking at that point when you saw this happening? Accountability. Accountability was the first thing that I, I had to continually think about. Fear, fear was now my fuel. Fear of, you know, what, what am I going to do? Or am I going to sit and, you know, talk about how negative everything is? Am I going to let the environment control my atmosphere and my reality? Or am I going to practice what I preach and really dive in and get really, really, really comfortable with the uncomfortable? In other words, mm -hmm. release myself from the familiar things mm -hmm. and embrace the uncomfortable feelings that can spark now new opportunities, not challenges. And I say that not as a line that I would give an audience, but it was true. And I would never advise coach, you know, it, it literally teach anybody something that I don't practice myself. And even when I don't practice, trust me, I have a family that reminds me, but <laughs> I, I had to pivot very quickly. How do I serve my clients in a different way? And here I am speaking now to companies around the world without having to get on a plane. And don't get me wrong, we're never going to replace live events. But that fear of what am I going to do? It's not as woe as me. It's how can I become more creative? I mean, you, you, you have a team of, you know, marketing and innovation and creativity. Where does that come from? It comes from the individual. It doesn't come from a box or something you put right. on a shelf. It's the human factor. And so it, it's how do you challenge yourself every single day to be a better version of yourself and celebrate that? Yeah. Celebrate that new technology yeah. that you just created or the new idea. And how do we pivot, if you will, in a direction? Because I think we're all, we can all agree, every day is the new normal. It's not the <laughs> unprecedented <laughs> times. Every day is going to throw you something, even before the pandemic and before every, I, I think we just got caught up on these words and we gave these words new meaning and a destination. So my, my well, job is to practice what I preach. It's great. So, but when you go back to, you know, 2020, January, what, what did you, you know, what, what took you to the next level besides what you just said? I mean, what, what did you put in place and how long did it take well, you? So did you do like, one sec. So did you, did the book come out? Did the apps come out? How did you tra transition for companies to bring you in virtually? What marketing sure. did you change? There had to be a ramp up because you weren't prepared. And that's what I'd like to focus on a little bit here. Sure. Well, the book that I released, Leverage Your Mindset, uh, was in the works for several years. So it was kind of ironic in the positioning of it. And the topic was really uh, uh, very relevant to what was going on in the current environment. The mobile app that we created that is a, that is a complement to the book and that teaches you more tools on sales growth mindset and other areas of your life. That was an 18 month project that started way before COVID. So I had things in place. But I think the real question is, well, we were going to deliver all those things to live events. How are we going to change? And I remember about 2018, I had a company hire me for a virtual event. And I remember saying to myself, <laughs> why would somebody, uh, I'll say this, why would somebody not have me live? I, I almost took it personally. What you want me to sit at my uh, home and do my, what I would do on stage on a camera, but they hired me to do that. So I was somewhat trained and experienced. I had some under my belt, if you will, to know what it would take. And immediately, and I remember the last time I walked on platform, it was February 23rd. It was in St. Louis, Missouri in the U.S. And I remember that it was a phenomenal event, but I missed it. And how do I still get that back? And so uh, we started upgrading very quickly. We already had a home studio because of my podcast. We started adding more elements and more technology and everything else here and Full, you know, you know, get, we weren't going to do green screen. We were going to do full backdrop. We were going to do great. full lighting, teleprompters. That was what we had to do. And we had to learn very quickly because some of the equipment wasn't working right away. And we had to learn to pivot. And then we started realizing clients were embracing this because there was no live. And if clients were embracing it and they were seeing the results, how do we do this on an ongoing basis to keep leaders and teams and sales individuals motivated on a regular basis. So you asked me how, it's not how, it's how fast can we do it? Right. How, how fast right. can we implement it, you know? Yeah. Sorry, you work quite fast, also in your adoption. I <laughs> like the first talks we had, and it was like pretty much the same here, yeah? You had to be quick, you had to adopt, and you also had to be quick to get still stuff on the market, like cameras, webcams, all was sold out. You couldn't get all that stuff to ramp it up and there was no 
one on one on how to get how to get your 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 real business or your live business in person into a virtual environment in 21 days. I, I was looking it up. There is no book. So how was that for you? Also, the change of now your best friend is a camera lens, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, literally, and, and because I'm alone, because of the pandemic, I couldn't have people in here. So right. like, I even thought, and it's funny, I'll even do this. I wasn't even prepared. Like, if what if this mic went out? Then I can immediately bring this mic in right. and have it ready to go on, on, on literally on a fly. And those are the type of things we had to think about because right. we're doing a live event, whether it was 50 people in a board, you know, uh, like boardroom setting, like all throughout, but like we're all sitting together, or there was 5,000 people on a virtual call how to be prepared, how do we do this without sharing a desktop, how do we change transitions, you know, do slides and so forth. So it was a learning curve. I was, I got to tell you, I was up sometimes one, two in the morning, literally in the studio learning how to do this myself and figure this out and, or have virtual calls with other people teaching me how do we add switchers uh, very quickly and to serve the clients and offer solutions. Right, right. For, awesome. so you went through something similar. I mean, what, how did you well, decide yeah, to reinvent? Uh, well, of course, it was some, something similar. So I, I got hired here to do workshops together with customers here at the facility. So the business technology and innovation centers were created to be on site yeah, for real experience, for hand on demos, for building something together. And like at the first day of the pandemic, I was sitting there and I was like, OK, two possibilities, resign. <laughs> or reinvent, yeah? And I was like, no, I don't want to resign. I just started with that company and I love the company. So it's about reinventing. And I just had one call with a person and he gave me that clue of, hey, you could go for a virtual studio. And two weeks later, we delivered the first virtual workshop and we learned a lot and we, we are still at learning. And it's about like being agile, adopting, finding things out, what is working, what is not working, how to make it better and yes, I can absolutely see there is a difference that you don't see people. So you think about interaction, getting feedback, if they are still there, if they are still with you and, and connect and you think about things to bring it in. And also, like you said, uh, well, yeah, my second microphone is standing right there, Ricky. So it's also, <laughs> also fail proof. So, so to both of you, let's ask the question. So and we can tell this to the audience, what are the keys to overcoming adversity in challenging environments? What happens when another one comes up and we're not prepared. What what are some things that people should put in place? What do you recommend for the mind and then to personally execute? Ricky, what do you think? Well, as you know, I'll kind of remind the audience a little bit more of that how mindset itself is a constant update of software, meaning uh, you have to step back and be more conscious of how maybe unaware you are of things meaning sit back in the audience and think about the things that you're feeding yourself on a daily basis. What thoughts are you bringing into, into mind? Something as simple as if it's going to be a hard day because you say it's going to be a hard day or you have a lot on your plate or because you're overwhelmed or what if this happens? What's the result? If you're overthinking things, you're already changing your perspective. But if we enter each day with better purpose and better direction, with a better update to our software, the, the playing field between our ears, if you will, mm -hmm. um, it, it changes the way we react to things. So no different from the apps on our phone that need to be constantly updated to work better. So does the app in our, in our head, that massive hard drive that it is. Uh, and it's so important that I think whether you're a leader of, of a team of creative individuals or IT, IT person, you could be in financials, you could be doing anything. We are human, and I think the more prepared we are to, if, we, if you will, become more conscious of our awareness, things start to change. There's a reason why Olympic athletes, winning Olympic athletes, athletes win is because not only the physical conditioning, because of the mental conditioning. Mm -hmm. That same mental conditioning can be for anybody watching this right now. If you truly wanna win in life and win in business, win in your relationships, you have to update that software on a regular basis. Well, yeah, but I, I have I have to ask a question. It's like, how do you update it? You you, you mentioned like normal the, the phone, yeah. So you can just like deinstall something, and your phone doesn't know that the application was there. Yeah, maybe somebody <laughs> else know or a system knows. But you know, in my mind, there's that whole story. That's like my manners, 
my behavior. I have done it yesterday like this, the day before like this. So I have it to do it tomorrow. And the thing of changing and adapting. So tomorrow I have to do it in a different way. Yeah. Right. Just like that thing sometimes creates fear in some people. For me, it's like, oh, let's go for it. Something new. That's great. What's something you can say? How, how can people make that easier? Yeah. yeah the- Frizzo, that's a great question. Uh, and, and this is something I dive into in the book and the mobile app and even my live programs. Uh, I, I really get people to think differently about the software. And one of the things that you can do is like a grocery list, write out the list. Don't just say I'm going to do it or I'm going to feel better or I'm going to think differently or I'm going to be a better leader, a better parent, uh, a better, you know, whatever. Write it down. And like a grocery list, we unconsciously work on that list, even if the list is not visible. How many times you ever forgotten your grocery list uh, before you, and then when you got to the store, you, you know, you're like, oh, I forgot the list. But studies have shown most people that actually physically write out the list end up getting everything on the list. And I know that seems really simple. You're like, well, you're just telling me to write a few things down, but it, it has a profound effect on the subconscious. And so when you physically write this down, it's almost like a contract of the things Mm -hmm. that you want to accomplish versus these random thoughts by, I have so much on my plate, how am I going to get it all done? Well, write it, write it down. Because that was the simple things we taught, we were taught in school. Sometimes as adults, we forget about the simplicity of the small little things that we can do. And that's a very powerful thing to literally write down that list of that statement. Even if it's you telling yourself, Frizzo or Robert or anybody watching, I'm going to be a better leader today. I'm going to be a better listener. I'm going to be a better solution provider because unconsciously you're already working on it by writing it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just like, it's a great example. So I was thinking, oh, I'm never writing grocery lists, but ending me up in the supermarket, buying a lot of stuff. I was never intended to buy it. That's but right. you brought in the topic of the school. And I remember just like writing down those little tiny pieces of paper with all the solutions and I forgot them or they were anywhere, but still I just like got the good marks on that. So it's like, Having a contract in my head, writing it down makes it makes it more positioned in your head of remembering and, and, and getting the information is serious. Well, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, that's something now reminds me back again. I also just like to be honest, I have a sticky note right there. It's like with the names and what do I have to do and all that. I never looked at it even a single second, but I wrote it down. So that's are the things mm-hmm. proven to example. So it is working right now. Mm-hmm. What what else? It's like when I say like, oh, no, I, I, I can't do it. It's like I don't feel like it. There's so much to do. And how should I do the change? You were talking about a pivot. A pivot always sounds simple. But a pivot might mean that you're doing something completely the opposite way from one day to the other. Is there a way how to pivot and feel good? Well, you just made a comment that's a very powerful thing. If I... You said, if I, if I have too much on my plate or how am I going to get it done? These phrases become our reality. Be more right. conscious of the words that we say to ourselves. Words are magic to the receptive listener, meaning ourselves. So if we say, uh, I have too much going on, I, I don't think I have the time, then you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You are going to fulfill that and live that based on that belief that you cannot do it. It wants to win to fail based on your belief whether you can or not. So the real question is, do you take the time to actually put it on your calendar and fulfill something for yourself? And in fact, I I challenge everybody watching this right now, whether you're you're live or you're watching it recorded. When this recording is over, when this live broadcast is over, uh, set three or four or five minutes on your calendar just for you, just for you. We're like, what do you mean? I mean, I, I want you just to sit there and just think. And whatever you think about is important. Or maybe it's just be conscious of your breathing and slow down. Because we all know when we slow down, we get more clear. And when we get more clear, we're more productive, we're happier, more focused, and, and more prosperous. But what do you do when you have a person that you're next, you know, you're connected to that is going through that overwhelming phases that you're talking about and all these advices that you're giving? What what do you what do you recommend? Because I don't think it's easy, as easy as that. I think it's there's some challenges, there's some hurdles, and I think there's some steps. And we Wait, can I, end I on that note too. But yeah, let ahead. me clarify. Are you saying what do you do when you have somebody that's that's negative? A, Is that what you said? Yep, a significant other. So your wife, Frizzo's, you know, wife, mine, other people's, you know, people we work with. What do we do 
to bring them to to the level that we want them to be at. Sure. So have you ever met somebody that you saw at the grocery store that you admired and you went out of your way to go see them and you literally stop what you're doing because they are motivating, they're, they're encouraging, they just make you feel good. You're attracted to that person, right? Okay, sure. Okay. So, uh, but we avoid people that are negative sometimes. We avoid because we don't want to be around them. So my th thought is, well, why don't we always focus on if we like the people that are mo mo motivating and uh, that are inspiring, why can't that be us? Uh -huh. And so if we become more motivating to ourselves, we serve ourselves better, other people are going to ask, what are we doing? So instead of trying to change other people, why don't we just focus on ourselves to become better? And then once we become better, more motivating, more inspiring, a better leader, a better spouse, a better solution provider to our clients, a better in technology, other people go out of their way to attract to us and ask us, what are we doing? What are you doing? I want to be like you. Uh, can you show me? Can you inspire me? Or they just want to be in your conversation because you are that way. So I would say, don't try to figure out how to change other people, change yourself, be a leader within yourself, speak to yourself within as a better version of yourself and others will be attracted to you like a magnet. Great, well said. So I think it's also like to say, like start with yourself, go for the first next possible step, get those negative thoughts like too much on the plate, too hard to do too far ahead, too expensive out of your thinking. And I will definitely go for the, for the grocery list. And we already said maybe there are some questions. We will still be live for the next three minutes. So if you have a question right now, please put that in the comments or also let us know what will you put on your grocery list, for example, <laughs> just for an example. Uh, yeah, and we already have, uh, right, it's working out. Go post your questions. Here is the first one already. Um, I can just like go for it. It's like any tips when feeling overwhelmed? happens to all people, whether starting out in career versus to the experience and the senior. It's like those levels. What, what can you tell about that, Ricky? Is there some advice? There's no quick answer to that, but I will tell you, sometimes the bigger things aren't so big. We start to put things in their proper perspective, slow down, and start to look at the solution rather than the problem itself. When we dwell to dwell, dive in too much of the problem of what the effect is or why it's not working or why we're overwhelmed, we stay in that realm. What's the solution? What's my solution here? Is it just stopping and breathing? Just mm -hmm. being more conscious? Is it stopping and, and appreciating the opportunity that you're being given? Is it stopping and, and being thankful and celebrate the things that you can do? So, Again, I guess my advice to that person is step back, don't overthink the problem, think about the solution itself. You know, um, we've been talking about motivation, we've been talking about mindset, we're talking about thoughts, all these things. You know, all these things itself can't make you a better person. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but they can make you better every single day. You follow me? So if you dived into any type of motivation or any type of training, Realize that the positive repetition of thought can change you every single day to create the better habits of being a better you. Right. Well, that's perfect. It reminds me of the system when you say, like, if you just get 1% better at something every day, yeah, and you look back after a year, look at how much achievement you have done. I don't know the number right now, but it was like, wow, that's really amazing. Yeah, just like huge in in head of like doing nothing or just like getting a bit worse not doing anything like that so it's about like accumulating the single steps to bring it into something to something bigger and yeah as also a question was in we now saw it in the back yes there is a dog and 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 rob i think you even you have two dogs and it's also something about well-being you so you take care of yourself doing a lot of sports walking with the dogs it's also taking times off thinking That's about great. it and then coming back and then start over talking about those things even on a LinkedIn live session, which is absolutely great. Oh, it's so much fun. That's perfect. So Robert, well, Rick, are you, this is great. Time? Yeah. Do you have an, any 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 last question or some remark? It's like, what are the key takeaways now for you? What are key takeaways for for business, for the ongoing things about the new normal, which is already there? You said that, Ricky. We were all talking about the new normal to come. It is here. It's the new new normal. Yeah, recognizing to take care of yourselves. Like you just mentioned the dogs and 
have hobbies, you know, work is, is amazing, but your life is more important. Make sure that you're doing things, making sure that you're great. Like Ricky said, you know, take care of yourself first and it resonates to others. You know, when you're happy, other people around you are happy. It's so important to be able to get out of bed and smile and work is a career, which is magical, but your life is obviously uh, at a level higher. So this series is based upon how do we, how do we recognize ourselves? And then build off of that. And so I would, you know, let people know that to, to make that a key priority. Well, thank you for this. I think that's that's very, very important also to say, like, and also believe in yourself. I think that's also what you say to sum it up. Like, you have to start believing in yourself. Then you can do all those things. Even put that on the grocery list. And we got some <laughs> comments. What is on the grocery list? You can, <laughs> you can see it, which is nice. Yeah, there are some priorities in life, which is way important. R Ricky, for you, it's like, what is a key takeaway? It's like you have seen now a lot of people asking for advice, especially over the last couple of months. And you say like taking that step back. Um, what's your key takeaway of the things about like the capability of humanity of all of us? We adopted to something we we wouldn't even believe it. It's happening just like in in sci-fi movies or something like that. But we are capable of doing a lot more than we thought of, right? Absolutely. I think the biggest takeaway that we've all learned in the last year, and as we learn to be, be better at everything we do, is that self-discovery never ends. So whether you're a leader in manufacturing, if you're in sales, if you're in customer service, celebrate what you have done today at the end of every day and look forward towards tomorrow. As Robert said, couldn't have said it better, invest in yourself. When you invest a little bit of time every single day, um, you start to see the changes that you desire versus the old unlimited beliefs or ho what's holding you back, like doubt or fear of failure and all those things that kind of sometimes hold us back from really pushing ourselves just a little bit harder. Don't look for change like literally overnight. Look for small changes every single day and you will start to see it within yourself. Other people will be attracted and want to be with you and learn from you. And by the way, when you become that positive, that strong, that optimistic, you become the expert that people really look for advice. And so again, whether you're in sales or solutions or even as a leader, it becomes a very powerful component of your updated software that can change every single day. Uh, I just received an email this morning from a gentleman uh, that was using my app on mindfulness. And one of the programs in there is about adapting to change. And he said, before all this happened, I was a very negative person. If something happened, I always said to myself, see, I told you so. See, I told you it was going to be a bad day. See, I told you, you know, this wasn't going to work. And he said, I've been using that program, that simple things that you were talking about. And something really you know, negative happened to me. Instead of overreacting and having such a frustrated outlook of it, of why me, why me? He said he just took a deep breath and just sat there and he was more present. He said, that was the one valuable lesson. I just wasn't present in the moment. And so by repeating those positive thoughts, it framed a new reality and a reaction of new software that helped my perspective. So repetitive actions could be good or could be bad. You get to choose which one you want to do. Well, absolutely. Thank you. So like working on it step by step, nudging it bit by bit, changing the habit, just like from a very tiny achievement and then maybe not just like say oh tomorrow nothing happens but look back week after week it's also like what they tell you if you do a fitness program you won't get that six pack within a day but you will see it week after week if you look back but you have to start somewhere and i think both of you give just like a great outside on how to can start that you are believers that you believe in yourself but also in your teams and that we can do way better day by day and also recognizing that resilience and that it's important to take care of ourselves, And I think with that, we can conclude that. Robert, what do you think? Fantastic. Well right? said. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So then I'd say, Ricky, thank you so much for being our guest today in, in that special humanity series, Fireside Chat. Also, thank you so much, Robert, for being with us today and bringing My all that to life. Yeah, thank it you. was so great to have both of you here. Um, just like uh, for all the audience, if you're interested in seeing more of those fireside jets, so please go to the website and register right now. We just uh, had the link and the banner that you can go under events and find the new fireside jets that are upcoming. If you have suggestions on the humanity series, 
but also on other topics you want to have tackled in regards of manufacturing in business and marketing on a global level. So the topics we covered over the last sessions and we will cover in the next ones. Feel free to comment them. Feel also free to contact us directly. Find me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a note and I'll be happy to have a session like this with you in the next time. So stay tuned. We're going to see each other very soon in the next Art of Smart Manufacturing Fireside Chat. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.